This is going to be part six of uh, the series of tutorials for creating our city spell uh, application. Uh, by the end of the previous one, which is number five, let's check. Uh, the steps we have performed were step 50, which is to disable all the five gem indicators, but not their um, container. And here they are, the gem indicators. So all the gems are there, they're just not uh, enabled and of course when we find each treasure that will enable each gem what i did notice now is that um we did talk in step five about step 52 but we forgot 51 very important we're going to give my wand seven the tag wand in lowercase um because the script will be asking for uh an object will or, or interaction uh triggering with uh, an object that has the tag one that gives us the option to have two wands or more than one and so on uh, so i'm going to go to my wand seven and as we've done a few times in the past i'm going to add tag press plus call it wand with lowercase for the only reason that that's the way it's going to appear in the script save go back to wand and it doesn't have this, the tag yet i added it but now i have to give it and now I can really say that step number uh, 51 is done. And I, be, I believe that we did, at least the beginning of step 52 in the previous tutorial, um, in the previous part, uh, create an empty game object, call it app manager, add a script to it named app manager, exact, put it in a scripts folder, create one if needed, we did, and replace the uh, default content with. So let's check that up to the code itself that we got everything. Let's see, do we have an object called app manager? Yes, uh, all uh, reset transform, and there's a script there called app manager. I'm going to open it for editing in um, Visual Studio. Takes a second. And of course, right now it should be nothing but a shell, which it is. I'm going to select all, delete that shell, and go to the Word um, tutorial, and right there, replace content with from this first using i marked it blue so it's easy to see highlight 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 carefully that's it all the way to this last curly bracket copy go here line one paste it should take us to line um 38 so it's not a huge script we're going to save First of all, before I do anything else, I'm going to go back to Unity and see if there are any compile errors. App Manager, back here, let's look at the script. Yep. It's all good. And it doesn't even have uh, any um, public fields to, uh, to populate. So let's look at the script. Just wanted to make sure that it compiled with no errors. Good. Um, let's see what it says. It has, of course, a bunch of usings in the beginning. Uh, the most noticeable one that you can see is the one called scene management, because of course, when we win the game, we go to the next scene, which is winning. Then there's public static int. Now notice that it says static, which means it's not really going to appear uh, in the um, there's an application data, sorry, let's save that first. There's an application data, which of course is a class that is shared by all the scripts. And um, inside of it, there's a public, it is public, but it's part of application data, so it does not appear in the, uh, in the uh, inspector. One of them, as we usually do, is the number of treasures to find. I just decided arbitrarily it's gonna be five. Um, and the number of treasures found already. 
So of course, when do you win the game? When this equals this, when there's five treasures to find and you found them. Then the class itself, App Manager. On start is where we actually reset the game or prep the game. On start, we're saying, hey, application data, the number of treasures to be found is five because we created five of them. And the number of treasures so found so far is zero. Then on update, and this will be checked, of course, uh, every frame, which is, you know, per frame, 72 times per second. What is it checking? Were all of them uh, found? If application data treasures to find equals applications data treasures found, which means if found all of them, I'm going to make it a little easier to read. No need for indentation in C sharp, or it doesn't make any difference. Notice that I'm not, you know, if, if this condition is met, that means we won the game. We're going to see that another script is the one that's actually going to increment treasures found, but it's not the app manager. All the app manager is doing is asking, did we win? Did we win? Did we win? Are they equal? Are they equal? Are they equal? If they are equal, I don't want at the exactly at the moment where I uh, find the last treasure and touch it, I want to give it about a two and a half seconds for the effect and the sound to finish and only then go to the winning scene. So there's a function called last one found, which will take us to the winning scene, but we're going to invoke that function only after two and a half seconds. So it's going to go something like this, find the first treasure, second treasure, third treasure, fourth treasure, fifth treasure, two and a half seconds, and you're in the winning scene. Notice that the name of the scene has to be exactly the name of our scene. Otherwise, it won't find it. Let me check. We don't have one yet, but we will. So that means one of the next steps is to create one. Um, but just like the scene main, which is with a capital M, the scene win is going to be with a capital W, which means go to the scene win to the win scene. Let's make even that with a cap. We need to make one. And this will happen a couple of steps from now. I'm saving. I'm going back to Unity, making sure that there are no uh, compile errors. Good. Um, right now, there's nothing really too much there, so we can uh, continue to the next step. We just copied all of this script. This is our app manager. Now, the single treasure, because that's the one being caught, so it needs a script that indicates someone found me. It needs a script to the prefab, so that way we're going to add it to all its uh, instances. We're going to add a script called singer, single treasure script. Exact. So I'm copying this name. Of course, delete the... Um, default code and paste what we're going to paste in a second but first let's find it i got my prefabs and here's a single treasure and i'm going to i don't even need to open it but i might uh, but the most important thing is to add component to it which is going to be a new script and the name of the new script is going to be single treasure script create and add and of course as we always do move it from the top of the assets folder to my script so it's nice and organized with the previous script we wrote. So here is, here are the two scripts in my scripts folder. Oop, not this. Not my fonts. My scripts. Here they are. The app manager, which we did already, single treasure script. Double click, open, delete previous content, go to the word and start highlighting from using all the way to right here, end class. Copy line one. Paste. That should have taken us to line 35. Again, not the biggest script ever. 
save. Um, let's see if Unity is accepting it. Didn't take long at all. Um, single treasure. It has two uh, public fields, which we're going to um, populate in a second once we get to them. So we are inside the um, prefab called single treasure. We added a script to it, and that script does have two fields. The idea is that it has those two big containers that we created, gem and vanish container. Gem is what it looks like until it's found. Once it's found, gem disappears, and vanish container, which is that energy effect, appears. As a matter of fact, we could do it right now. The part of my gem will be played by gem. The part of vanish container, which is disabled to begin with, will be played by the vanish container. And now those two objects are assigned. Let's look at the script. All of its 35 lines. Um, not too many libraries using, uh, just normal stuff. And then the class. We're declaring two public objects as we've just seen them, these guys. Uh, one game object, gem, uh, with its lights and everything. Remember, the gem is not just the gem. The gem is a whole container that has a gem and a fireball, you know, effect around it. Here it is. And three lights around it and so on. And all of that together is what will disappear. One more thing that it has, by the way, is also a uh, sphere collider. This is really what we're colliding with when we find the gem. This is what the wand will touch. Uh, so this is the part that will disappear when we find the gem, and the energy blast will be the part that, the vanish container, will be the part that appears. Let me turn off the gizmos. The vanish container will be the part that appears and plays the energy blast with a sound. The vanish container also should have a sound that plays when it's awoken. So again, vanish container needs to be, um, gem needs to be enabled, vanish container disabled. Back to the script. Um, also, not a public, but a private Boolean, true, false, was I found. It's that treasure keeping track of was I found. Why do we need a Boolean? Because the wand might touch it two or three times within the span of like a few milliseconds. I want to make sure that it doesn't count it as two finds or three finds. Only the very first one. So a Boolean to prevent extra collisions. Count only the first one. Because as soon as we get the first one, we'll change it to false. Or to true. Sorry, from false to true. Count only first. And this is why on start, the first thing that we do is, okay, was I found equals false. Initially not found. And then on update, which is of course 72, 72 times a second, um, we're doing something really simple. We're saying, hey, I wanna rotate. How do we rotate? If we say just transform.rotate, and the question is who's transform, it's of course the object that owns this script. The object is the treasure, it's the whole treasure. What will it do? Rotate. What um, axis will it rotate? Y. Let's remind us ourselves that um, there are three axes, X, Y, and Z. If we wanna put, if we wanna address the Y, uh, that would be up because uh, uh, x is left right. Uh, if we wanted a negative number, it would still be uh, y, but it would be down. And then of course the z is forward and backward. So vector three up is a shorthand for addressing, as you can see, shorthand for writing vector three, zero, one, zero, no x, positive y, no z. How fast? 40 times del delta time. We explained this back when we did the target. What is del time dot delta time? It's the time in interval in seconds, it's actually milliseconds from the last frame to the current one. A 70 second of a second. One second divided by 72. As a matter of fact, we can see this number if we go to edit um, 
sorry, not Visual Studio, in uh, Unity, Edit, and look at the project settings. Time, this is the number. This is time dot delta time. Now, if I just say, oh, please rotate one degree every time this happens, it will rotate really, really, really slowly and will complete, you know, uh, it'll take it 72 seconds to complete, you know, a, a complete cycle. So I just experimented and thought that uh, 40 times that, which means it will complete 40 degrees per second, um, would be a lot better. So it will still be kind of slow and nice and magical, but it will rotate slowly. Let's see what that looks like. Single treasure play. You see it rotating? You can actually go to scene. And here it is. It's rotating the whole thing. If I actually looked at any one of my treasures, looked at this one, here is its Y. You can see that it's about 40 degrees per second which means it'll take it about three seconds to complete no not even three like uh, six seconds to complete um, a complete uh, rotation the important thing for me to for, in rotating this was that those um, spotlights inside will rotate with it and will kind of draw my attention when I'm looking for them Okay, back to the script. So this will rotate the whole thing. Whole treasure rotates around itself. Because if I wanted it to rotate around something else, there's rotate around, which we will use in a different application. Then this is the end of update. The next uh, function, which is really the last one, is, of course, on trigger enter. Let's remind ourselves, why not on collision enter? We're doing on trigger enter because we want the wand to touch the treasure but not move the treasure we're not knocking it out of place we wanted to basically go through it but still detect that it was triggered in order for that to be detected at least one of them needs a rigid body and a collider set to trigger so let's see the treasure has a rigid body and has a sphere collider but it's not set to trigger but the wand is the wand has a box collider that was set to trigger and that fulfills all the conditions for detecting trigger so what is the treasure asking remember this script is attached to the treasure there was a trigger enter there was an event called collider and the object i just gave it the name who bumped and then it's asking, it's like, you know, the treasure is being triggered. If who bumped dot game object dot compare tag want and I was found equals false. Let's give it a nice comment. Hey, the object who touched me is your tag want and if it is is this the first touch first of all if this uh, condition is uh, met I was found equals true so from that point on, even if there's another trigger, it will not meet this um, condition, and therefore it will perform all of this only once. Because as soon as we found it, we say, oh, I was found. Now 
I am found. And what happens when the treasure is found? Notice how when I was developing this, I was, uh, you know, just making sure that I get a message. Print bump. Um, first of all, we want the uh, gem to be turned off. We found the treasure, gem disappears. Gem disappears, but the vanish effect appears. Show vanish effect. Here's probably the most important line in this whole script. Then it talks to the application data and goes, okay, everything looked good, everything's great. Treasures found plus plus. One more treasure found. Tell everyone, because application data is accessible by everyone, its scope is the whole application. One more treasure found. And remember, the, the uh, app manager is con constantly keeping an eye on this. It's constantly asking if, 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 on update, is it equal, is it equal? So at first it's going to be zero, then one, then two, then three, then four. And finally, when it's five, when treasures found has been incremented to five by finding the fifth treasure, finally it's going to take us to the winning scene after two and a half seconds. I'm going to stop this tutorial here and we will continue on part seven.